Luxair Jets is excited to announce the new most convenient way to fly non-stop from Lexington to historic Saratoga Springs throughout the racing meet. We are now offering exclusive group packages on our luxurious private jets. Each package offers a once-in-a-lifetime experience that you can share with your friends, family, or business partners. Call for pricing and availability. After getting rained out yesterday, we're back at you with the Saratoga Report, brought to you by Lux Air. There will be no Twinight Doubleheader, though, only one uh, Saratoga Report today, but it's going to be a good one because I got my colleague Dave Grenning with me, and we're going to start off with some real breaking news. It just broke right before we went on the air here. By the time this gets up, it'll probably be all over the place, but Dave got it first, and that's about Songbird. Uh, Rick Porter, Songbird's owner, called to confirm that she will indeed run in the Grade 1 personal ensign here on August 26th. It uh, was thought to be the, the choice the, of where he was, she was going to run, but uh, he finally confirmed it today. She had been nominated to the Pacific Classic, and there was some talk about just training up to the, or the uh, whatever the race is, the Zenyatta Stakes in California. But she'll be coming here where she last year she won the Alabama and the Coach of Club American Oak. So it'll spice us up an already great day in Traverse Day. And once again, we'll get to see Songbird and Birdsong here before the meet is over. Let's talk about some workouts that took place on Saturday and then again Sunday morning. Saturday's two most relevant works uh, were for the upcoming Travers. Uh, both of them took, I oh, know, sorry, one of them took place uh, very early over in Oklahoma. The other one took place on the main track. You were there for Gervin. Uh, what did you think? Uh, you know, it was an easy half mile. First breeze back after winning the Haskell. It kind of went a half and 50 and change and uh, did it fine. He looks, he looks healthy. He looks like he was getting over the ground pretty well galloped out in like they believe 104 and change uh, Joe Sharp who's the trainer of the horse was on on his back and you know he was pretty happy with the way the horse was getting over the ground so he looks like he's fine uh, you know coming out of the Haskell and we'll see if he can get the mile and a quarter and over here on the main track yesterday it was cloud computing Javier Castellano was aboard Dave and I both agree broke off at the five ace pole but it was officially credited as a half mile work in 49 with a very big gallop out it was and a uh, Javier Castellano had not worked this horse before. I think Chad Brown, who's still a little bit mystified on why the horse ran so poorly in the Jim Dandy, was looking for some feedback, and I think, and so he put Javier on him and got a little, you know, got some positive feedback. I think Chad was happy with the move. Uh, it's not Chad's M.O. to run a horse back in a race like the Travers off such a bad race in the Jim Dandy. He needs the horse to show him something these next three weeks, or sort of the four weeks since the race, and yesterday was a, an important test that he passed and he'll work one more time this Saturday I, I would gather if he works similarly as he did this Saturday he'll be in the race the feature coming up this uh, next week will be the Alabama and a lot of workers over the last couple of days for that race Sunday morning uh, the weather was uh, with the rain yesterday that you saw impacted the racetracks the main track uh, virtually no workers on the main track all morning long but the Oklahoma training track was not only open for business it was on the fast side and we saw several uh, Alabama hopefully over there during the course of the morning. Dave, you were over there for most of them. Uh, which one impressed you? Uh, Elate continues to thrive here. Uh, she, she was second in the, uh, the, the Coaching Club American Oaks in a very narrow defeat, and her work since then have been very good. And like you said, the track kind of sped up today with the moisture that was in it, and then after being harrowed twice at the 7.30, 9.30 breaks, she, I thought she was very good. Holy Helena for Jimmy Jerkins, the Queens Plate winner, uh, she, she worked in company with a horse called Narsdale, second week in a row for that for that pair to go together, and, and you know she, she looked like she was moving well too. She's got a bigger task to uh, overcome here. She's been running very well against on synthetic. Now she's got to step that up on, on the dirt. She will have a new pilot though, Louis Contreras, who had rode her to victory in the two races at uh, Woodbine, is going to be replaced by Hall of Famer John Velasquez. I got over there in time to see a late work this morning too, and she looked great. Uh, I had her even a little faster and uh, going nice and easy. So a good move by a late. Also on the main track, I can't remember now if it was Friday or Saturday, the days run into each other, but Salty uh, also worked for the race, and I thought she was very, very good. She broke off uh, behind a stable mate, a target, and uh, readily ran by the target, going easily, 47 and change, I believe, for the half, and then a big gallop out into the turn, so Salty's doing well. And uh, speaking of Salty and her connections, Mark Cassie, been slow first half of the meet, and uh, things sure, certainly turned around for them in a hurry on Saturday. They won two races. It was great to see, including the big one, the four-star Dave with world approval. Yeah, the wild, wide open four-star Dave went to a world approval. I think the rain actually increased his chances. Uh, he, he'd been a three-time graded stakes winner over softer ground or good ground, and you know I don't know what they called it yesterday, but the chart caller called it yielding, and it was every bit as every bit of yielding as, as he had called it. Uh, Mark Cassie had been confident either way 
uh, but when it rained, I'm sure his confidence got even stronger. The horse sat off uh, two horses, uh, Bala Rocks and obviously Sassy Little Lila. Sassy Little Lila didn't seem to handle the, the turf uh, too well. Time Test didn't seem to handle it either. The favorite who kind of spun his wheels in the stretch never switched leads. But World Approval, a, a classy horse from a mare who's produced a, a gazillion uh, uh, stakes winners. Uh, Win approval, I believe, is her name, and just a tremendous uh, uh, race mayor producer. And now you have a new player, I think, for the Breeders' Cup Mile in the World Approval. And uh, the uh, the bad feelings for uh, Chad Brown after Tad Time Test got beat didn't last very long, did they? He certainly uh, closed out his afternoon uh, in high style. Yeah, uh, he did not catch the plane to Chicago, but he was flying high yesterday afternoon with uh, Desita winning the Beverly D and uh, Grand Jete, who might have been best in the race, uh, dead heating for second after encountering some trouble uh, in the stretch. And then Roel Rosario, who was on Grand Jete, made up for if you had thought maybe give, didn't give her the best of rides, gave a very nice ride on Beach Patrol, who won the Secretariat there last year at Arlington. I don't believe had won since. And then he beats a nice horse in Deauville, who I thought was home free when he when the uh, they came into the stretch and the the gap opened along the rail. They could have driven a Mack truck through, but Beach Patrol gets it done. So now Chad Brown won won the Grade One and two Grade Ones in Chicago. He ran second in the Grade One here. Not a bad day. He's tied with Todd Pletcher. They both have 22 wins through 20 days of the meet. They're both on target, on pace to win over 40 and break Chad's record from last year. That was the only negative about those two uh, million dollar wins. They didn't count in the training standings yeah. here, but it's going to be a great uh, race for the title, the second half of the meet. And it's going to be great for us to follow them, the riding uh, challenge and uh, the riding contest between the Ortiz brothers and every, all the other great action that's coming up here during the second half of the Saratoga 2017. It'll all be right here on DRF.com.